describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is that I'm, what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm saying. Well, I'm just curious. What you, I'm, just, I'm trying to say what you mean by hateful con content, and I'm asking for specific examples. Elon Musk, he is not, I mean, he's a fighter. <laughs> Welcome back. Musk sitting down with a BBC reporter who asked the technology giant about reported rise in hate speech on Twitter. Musk asked him right back to cite some specific examples, and the interviewer couldn't do so, which, yeah. which started that tense little exchange between Musk and the BBC uh, reporter, even asking about their misinformation and their COVID-19 coverage. Yeah, I think this is something that a lot of people have been up in arms about what do you consider misinformation right. and the, the way they did it with Trump and all that. But here to discuss, we're joined by media strategist and host of What's Bugging Me podcast, Dennis Neal. Dennis, let's get Michael, right into it. Welcome, Christina. Was, was that just one of the richest, most <laughs> lovely, wonderful moments of Elon Musk since taking over Twitter and in the post-Trump era, if you want to call it that, one of the best snide reporter takedowns I have ever seen. Musk is remaking Twitter into the most powerful media platform. Think about this. Now, the BBC edited it out that great exchange. Their viewers didn't see it. That was an hour-long interview. But the interview aired live on Twitter Spaces. 3.3 million people watched that live, that exchange wow. happened, listened to it. And then in a single tweet afterward, 18 million people saw that takedown. It shows you the power of the Twitter platform. And now Elon Musk is moving into AI. How did I know you were exactly. going to love this? How did I, I knew <laughs> oh, yeah, that was just going to jump on this that, one. He, he deserved that. I'm sorry. He totally deserved that. The media has been after uh, 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 Elon Musk. They don't like him. Big tech doesn't like Elon Musk. And yet in his first month owning Twitter... He took down 300,000 kind of child exploitation accounts. Where was the old Twitter about that? They've silenced something like 60% more than the old Twitter, yet he's getting no credit for it. Now he says most advertisers are returning to the platform. But here's the thing. Just recently, reports show up. He named Twitter, the holding company, X Corp. That's his 20-year dream to come up with an everything app that you can do everything on for all kinds of transactions. That's what Twitter will become. And then he formed this AI company, mm -hmm. X.AI. Now, the weird thing is, only two weeks ago, he led about 1,100 tech guys and, and, and women and scientists saying, uh, AI is going too far. We should not advance past the current technology. Let's just hold off for at least six months because we need to come up with safety guidelines. Two weeks later, he, we learned that he's formed this company and he's hired the top uh, scientists from Google's Deep Mind Lab. Yeah, it'll be so interesting. But here's the th I feel like he's the only guy standing between big tech and us and stopping big tech made from dominating the next revolution. Well, I think that you brought up a lot of good points there. The first one being that a lot of journalists now, they go into these interviews and they're really not that prepared. They don't have um, examples that they can cite. They just say things, make accusations, yeah. claims yeah. without actually having any information to back it up. And that's because not a lot of people do what Elon Musk just did, which is push back and say, yeah. hey, no, 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 you can't just make these claims without having the facts behind them. And it should be a lesson to us all to make sure that you're read up on the topic before you go in and, and make accusations. And the other thing is, is do you think it was a bit hypocritical that Elon Musk went out and said, hey, let's let's stop AI here. It's too dangerous. But he obviously must have had these plans to be building his own AI. Well, you know, um, you, you could call it hypocritical if you dislike Elon. But if you're a fan of Elon Musk the way I am, you would call it strategic. I mean, he's trying to get the whole market to agree. Let's hold off on advances while he then you know starts up his operation to come up and match him and then go from there. But there are some real risks here. It's just that never before have I heard tech people who are usually so bold be so kind of, oh, we really are looking for regulation. If you listen to the All In podcast, four very smart tech brains on Friday, they're talking about, well, you know, three of them said we need regulation, but um, government will never be able to regulate this. And just quick, in about 30 seconds, I think we just lost Parler, right? Parler just went belly up. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, they're, they're shutting down for, for, for a little bit, apparently for a re, restage. But what that really shows is you can't splinter off of Twitter and try to start these narrower platforms. Here's for conservatives. This is for liberals. There's one man for liberals, that's going to fail too. You got to come back to the big platform. It's why the media companies threatening to leave. 
they're not going to do that. NPR will be back. Mm, yeah. Dennis, we know that your podcast, What's Bugging Me, is available on iTunes and Ricochet. Everyone should go check it out for more. Dennis Neal, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much, guys. Have a glorious day. <laughs> you as well. And we will be right back.